from your 200 plus episodes or 200 plus conversations around UFOs, what would you say uh, your theory is, first of all? And then what would you say is the craziest theory that you've heard around UFOs? Uh, well, not all 200 of them are on UFOs, but I do bring it up quite consistently, even with somebody, uh, the lady on for talking about Shakespeare. And I was like, do you think he was an alien? You know, so it'll slip into all conversations, you know, no matter what it's about. Uh, but yes, yeah, so my uh, perception of it has come very, very far. And it's simply because I don't isolate myself to any one thing. I, um, you know, I don't hang on to beliefs. I've got ideas because they're so much easier to change. It's from a line, line in a Kevin Smith movie, Dogma. And it's just easy for me to kind of look at things and go, okay, cool. Where's that? Where are we at with this understanding? And where am I at with my understanding of myself, what this place is? Because I think there's the the study of UFOs have has led me to so many more interesting questions than what are UFOs? You know, like what is this place? What is what are you? Are you creating this? The idea of solipsism, you know, are you the only thing here? Uh, is everything else just um something for you to play with essentially so you don't feel like you're going crazy in a place that's just you there there are so many levels to take this and even into uh when you talk about the idea of uh aliens snatching you up and the idea of the abduction versus something like contact where they invited in and they're like yeah yeah take me versus this idea of oh i got picked up it was a horrible experience like what is that about because there's a lot of laws of the universe that say that that goes against sovereignty and in that way uh you would say then that um maybe again it's just like you at a level so every all the entities or whatever especially the ones that can put hands on you are you just another version of you and so therefore that's why it doesn't violate any of the sovereignty issues now um i think there are a lot of ways to look at all of this stuff i've come from the nuts and bolts craft to far beyond it it the idea that they're strictly or exclusively coming from other planets presupposes so many things that i'm very far past and so it presupposes that there are other planets out there for you to go visit, right? And so it automatically puts this realm and this reality in a category that's very defined. Within that realm, you can come up with scenarios in which you could envision things working out to that effect, yes. But to take what other people say is the observ observable reality, define it as your own, and then call that, and then, and then wrap theories around it. The way that I sort of look at this we could take this from a micro scale. So if you if you scale up all the like temporary truths that we know now, because that's what I feel all of this is, it's just things that you temporarily come across and you'll figure out later on are not so, or you were pretty close or you needed to learn that to move on, right? Within all of that idea, there's there's this sort of concept that it can all be boiled down to the elements and the limitations and the beliefs in which you give it. So have you ever seen that movie uh, Apollo 13 with Tom Cruise? Remember that? Or not Tom Cruise. What is that dude's name? Um, uh, the guy from the island. Why can't I? F I'm blanking on this dude's name. Tom Hanks. Shit. Thank you. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Tom fucking Hanks, right? Uh, okay. So, um, uh, man, I got off track. I knocked you off. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, what was I talking about, dude? So, with, uh, I guess, what, what movie were we talking about? Paul Fatin. You. so apollo 13 thanks guys it's been an interesting week all right so in apollo 13 they take this box of shit right they go and they say hey this is all they have on the aircraft to solve the problem at hand and they dump the box down and then there's this just arrangement of different objects tape whatever and these are the things in which they can solve that challenge this is what again disciplines the education systems things like this do they tell you that okay there may be other things outside here, but you're only allowed to solve problems in your reality within this box. And so from that, that's where limitations begin. That's when you introduce other ideas, sort of such as like uh, you create your reality with your thoughts and the way that you think actually physically manifests and that there's nothing outside of yourself. Nothing happens to you. It's all brought through you based on your paradigm to create the next breath. And there's only the moment of now and you create your past, present, and future if they exist at all beyond the current moment in the current moment. So this idea of past that you've experienced, all of those things, but to get there, you go through all the rabbit holes of all of the shit with the UFOs. And I love all of it. Now I'm not excluding any of it. And I will first and foremost say that I have no clue what's going on here, but 
I, I have looked very, very far into the philosophies of this. I walk this realm, whatever this is, um, with just multiple lenses of perception that don't bother me that they're at odds with one another, that um, I'm fine if the earth is flat and round. I'm, I'm actually, it's cooler if it's flat because it means so many more cool things, right? And I love that conversation. I'm not a flat earther though. Like I'm fine if it's not. It just, to me, has to do with how you view this place and what you want to get out of it. And the more that I looked at this, the more I saw it, I first absolutely saw this in myself, and you step out of the character that you've been playing here, and you become the actor that you were playing the character, and that's when you're like, oh, I'll detach from the role, and then now I'm writing my own script. Now I'm doing my own shit. And even through, again, with the UFO phenomenon, you come through the stair steps of, okay, well, uh, nuts and bolts craft and that's pretty fucking cool but uh, they may also be a breakaway civilization it may be all human stuff maybe you know none of it's alien at all and they just kind of have a suit or technology that's just so far beyond that we think that it's that another thing is that uh, yes they're alien but they're in an inner earth type of a thing so actually there's no out there it's it's here but they're within the earth so they're crypto terrestrials in a sense because they're not extraterrestrials the other one, back to the flat earth thing, if you want to stretch the realm a little bit, extraterrestrial could mean extra land in this realm. So we're talking beyond the known lands of what we're talking about. There's even a map on the moon that's pretty cool that you guys can check out that shows extra land because it reflects the continents of the earth in the oh, surface. I've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has extra land on the outside, kind of like what we're talking about. So in that way... Things living over there, perhaps Pleiadians over here, maybe reptilians over there. Maybe if you go that way, thousands of miles past the ice wall, that's where Zeta Reticuli is. It's just another landmass in this infinite plane. And so extraterrestrial would mean an extra part of this land, right? You have that. You have the uh, interdimensional theory, which is, in my mind, very tied to the um, time travel theory, which I absolutely love that one as well. Future humans uh, coming back in time machines or past humans in super advanced craft coming forward to our future and being like, what the fuck is going on? You know, we thought you guys would have your shit together. Um, and then, you know, there's everything in between. Again, down to even that it's a psychosemantic phenomena that you're creating all of it. Um I, I love all of it and I'm fine if it's all true or none of it's true or any of that, man. I just take it in all the directions. I'm okay with 